I want to touch on busing and I want to touch on outputs as well. Why you might want to bus reverb, for example, for beginners and what you kind of need to keep in mind with um, using outputs. So let's dive into busing first. Let's take the idea of our vocal sample here because we've created a space designer reverb on the track already. What we want to do is change this space designer reverb into a bus reverb instead of a reverb on the track. So let's create that first, then we'll explain why we do that. So let's just remove this plugin. Creating buses happen to be under the sends or stereo output. And now I'm gonna open up my mixer and show you what I mean by this. Okay, so command two to open up a mixer. And this is all the tracks that are happening in our session right now. We have a guitar, we have drums, we have this ad lib tracks, we have our vocal sample. Now this small verb, church, ambience, small hall, drums, stereo out and master. These tracks here that I've highlighted, these are all bus outputs and you can notice that because they were given these yellow icons and these are aux tracks. So these are tracks that I've created that you can add different effects on and then you can like go to any of the, your tracks in your session and you can send signal, like a certain percentage of signal to one of these tracks. So for example, this is the, the track we're going to have our reverb on. I'm just gonna remove this paid plugin and add a designer, space designer reverb. I'll show you how to create this in a second, but I just wanna explain the, the kind of theory behind this. So on this track, we have our space designer. And over on our vocal sample track, which is here, we're going to send a percentage of this vocal signal to this yellow aux track, which is also a bus track. So how we do that is, now I'm gonna go back to the inspector window and show you how to do that. But it's nice to visualize what's going on here. And then these tracks you can see are going to this track, the stereo out track. Now let's go back to our inspector window on their vocal sample, and I'll show you, first of all, how we can create a bus from scratch on the inspector window. We would go to our sends, and we would go to bus. And inside bus, we would have all these empty buses. Bus one, bus two, bus three, bus six, and bus seven are taken. And that's what was happening on our mixer window. You see how we have one, two, three, four, five. Now let me go to my mixer window. I have one, two, three, four, five. So if I wanna create a new bus, I can go sends bus, bus five, because it's empty, there's no writing here. And now I just created this track here. And it says aux six at the bottom. So let's call this reverb. Okay, and now let's go back to our, mix, our mixer window, option two, sorry, command two. Now we can see that we've created this reverb track. It has nothing on it yet. Okay, that's all I wanna show you with the mixer window. Now let's do everything in the inspector. On our aux track, our reverb track we've created, bus five, we can add the space designer. So let's add the space designer. And here we would choose the reverb we like. Let's just use a preset. Let's do the same preset we had because it was cool. It was the big Gothic church. When I play my track here, nothing's gonna happen. It's gonna be, there's gonna be no reverb added yet because I haven't sent anything to the track. I haven't put any people on the bus yet. I gotta put people on the bus so it can drive to the reverb track and drop the kids off at the reverb track. You can kind of think of it like that. So I have to go to this bus here that says bus five on the vocal sample and then click and drag up and now once the circle is full, that means I've put all the signal plus more to say, hey, go to the reverb track. That's gonna have way too much reverb. I might tail that back to maybe negative 12.6. The idea though is you choose how much you want based on how it fits with your song. And if you don't like the reverb you've chosen, go into this reverb that you originally clicked and you can also edit the reverb. But the idea here of using buses and why we want to use buses is because 
It helps us organize our session. It also helps us save on CPU power because I don't want to add the same plugins on every single track. Sometimes you're using plugins that you want on all tracks. These are reverbs that I've already added. I have one in my session always that has a small reverb, and then I have one that always has a big reverb. So because I know bus one is small reverb always in every session, and bus two is always a big reverb, and let's say I'm recording a vocal or I'm recording a guitar, this is what will save you time. Let's say you have this guitar loop at the top, and you wanna add a big reverb to it. You know that in bus two, if I go to my guitar track and go to this little thing, go bus two, I know that I can add big, a big reverb here. And that just saves time, but it also saves your computer power. Let's move on to section seven now, where we talk about common mistakes that amateurs make when you're just starting out with logic. And I find myself, I'm still making tons of mistakes. I'm by, by no means a, an expert in this. I'm learning just like you're learning.